Hi friends, though I am extraordinarily loath to do so, let's revisit the 2016 presidential primaries. In 2016, I was freelancing in Seattle, which is a fancy way of saying mad broke, and I had a Skype interview with a Hillary Clinton staffer for a job that didn't pan out, but they said, hey, maybe in the next round of hiring, we should talk again. The primaries continued feeling less like a process by which I was to research and listen and decide whose values most matched my own and more like a job interview. I had to understand and explain the benefits and shortcomings of every statement and policy position. I had to find links to cite my sources and get in my Lincoln Chafee jokes. I had to be disappointed in people very loudly and in public to preserve my moral high ground. I had to say a lot and I had to move fast. And I felt really proud of myself, like I was performing my duty as an informed and active American. But also, it was mostly just performing. Like, I knew I was on an audition, and I was successful in that, and getting that job did allow me to do real and deep and meaningful work. But I did feel a certain sense of satisfaction when my debate tweets would blow up, or when a reporter would retweet my very intelligent point, or when my follower count went up. Yeah, of course I did. However, while social media can be a powerful organizing tool, I've worked with it long enough to understand that the revolution will not be born out of my individual Twitter clout. All of the work that campaigns do to dominate the media cycle is important for them. I understand why they want us to read their human interest profiles now, why they release one policy position a week instead of all of them at once. They need to get in the news every day because the news happens every day. And for those of us who do participate in the discourse, they can't get left behind. But zooming out, I'm realizing that there are limits to how participating in the discourse can change things. She says, participating in the discourse and hoping to change things. But a big part of why campaigns spend so much time and money trying to get media coverage, and I'm gonna consider you tweeting about them as media coverage, is because they need as many people as possible to do three things donate money, vote, or volunteer to tell other people to vote. Congratulations, you can now skip straight ahead to doing any and all of those things. I don't know who my 2020 candidate is yet, and when you should decide that is up to you and depends on where you live. In New York, the primary is likely to be in April of 2020, so if I start in January 2020, that gives me enough time to research, figure out who I want to vote for, and even volunteer for them if I want to, and saves me months of hearing about what their favorite breakfast cereal is. But in the meantime, there are so, so many elections that happen before even the first primaries in February of 2020. So like, I've been volunteering with an organization that helps people under 40 run for local office. It's called Run For Something. I'll put some links in the description. But I talk to people on the phone every week or two who are thinking about running for a state legislature or city council or school board, or maybe they don't know what office they wanna run for yet. So we talk about, well, what issues in your community do you wanna solve? And what's the office that's gonna best allow you to address those issues? And in doing that, I've learned about how like, there are just elections nearly every week, all the time, all over the country. And I've talked to nine candidates so far this year. Six of them have elections in 2019, this year, before anyone in the country has an opportunity to vote for a single presidential primary. And they can go off and do things like fund salary increases for teachers or make sure trans kids can go to the bathroom or pass background check laws for guns or make sure that people who want abortions can get abortions. Those are things that align with my values. And those are things that realistically, because of the way our government works, the president does not and sometimes cannot do. Like, here are two of the candidates that I've talked to recently. Victoria Watlington is running for city council in Charlotte, North Carolina, because her district is developing and she wants to make sure that her community can continue to afford to live there and have a part in planning how their community grows instead of getting gentrified out of it. Cinda Don is running for city council in Lynn, Massachusetts, because having worked in the government, she knows that the system can be hard to navigate and she wants to help underrepresented communities advocate for themselves, know their rights, and access the services that are available to them. Those things seem important. I would like to help them do those things. Maybe you value different things. But I'll tell ya, probably state and local governments are responsible for those things also. My worry is that primaries can, if we let them, suck the air and the time and attention and money out of all of the other smaller races that will happen before them. Because while we need to beat the big bad final boss of white nationalism, which by my value system, we absolutely must do, it's not like one dude. It's not just the president, right? He's not a member of the state legislature of Alabama or Missouri or Georgia. 
He's not the governor of Florida. He's not a county judge in Wisconsin or a city council member in North Carolina. And the audition for 2020, I think, is not having 16 Twitter tabs open about it now. It's making sure that I find those people who reflect my values and you find the people who reflect your values and who will not have a nationally televised debate, who will not have a million dollar campaign budget, and who do make a lot of decisions that impact your life. And figuring out how to help them solve the issues in your community that they wanna solve. Some of you are doing that already and I see you. And some of you are not Americans and so none of this applies to you, but I also see those of you who are talking about the EU elections and I wanna hear about those of you who are doing the work in other parts of the world. If you're working to solve a problem in your community or can think of a problem that you wanna solve, please tell me about it in the comments. And for the rest of you, I extend an invitation for you to start. If you don't know how, my comments section is open for questions but also take a stroll down there and take a look at what other people are doing and find some inspiration there. Let's go do some helpful things with good people. I'll see you soon.